Welcome to Training in Instructional Design. This will be an introduction to training in adult learning. This is Lecture C. The learning objectives for the Introduction to Training in Adult Learning Unit are number one, describe the three basic steps of the training cycle, and two, describe the five phases of the ADDIE model of instructional design. In this section of Unit 1, we will examine the training cycle. This is a sequential process used to discover, develop, and implement the training program. The training cycle is a recommended, although simplified, list of key steps for successfully developing and implementing training programs. This list can be expanded or combined, depending on the needs of both the student and the trainer. There are many instructional systems design models, and all these models describe a training cycle. When studying these models, you must remember they are cyclical models, which means that once you reach the final stage, you should cycle or loop back to the first stage to make sure you address the original problem. An instructional systems design model is a process to analyze, design, develop, implement, and finally evaluate training. The training cycle in ADDIE is one example and the method we will discuss in this unit. You can compare the ADDIE model with other models such as KEMP as well as Dick and Carrie, through reading training textbooks and other online resources. Let us now explore the ADDIE model of instruction. It is difficult to say when the ADDIE model was first developed, but at this time I think we can conclude that the ADDIE model is merely a colloquial term used to describe a systematic approach to instructional development. The ADDIE model is synonymous with Instructional Systems Development, ISD, and the terms are often used interchangeably. The model seems not to have a single author, but rather to have evolved informally through the years of training and instructional design. There is no original publication which describes the model in detail. ADDI can be thought of as just an umbrella term, which refers to a family of models that share a common underlying structure. There are five stages in the ADDI model. Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation. This is the training cycle. The evaluation is used to validate your original analysis. Now let's look at each one of the stages in detail. First, we'll discuss the analysis stage. In the analysis stage, the instructional problem is clarified. Instructional goals and objectives are established, and the learning environment and the learner's existing knowledge and skills are identified. Let's look at some questions that are addressed during the analysis phase at the ADDIE model. Who are the learners, and what are their characteristics? Are the learners physicians, nurses, or staff? Are there any language barriers? What is the training and learning culture in the clinic? Another question is, what is the new behavioral outcome? Has the management clearly defined the goals or the outcomes of the training? Also, consider what types of learning constraints exist. And what are the delivery options? Classroom training, one-on-one -on -one coaching, standalone web-based training, a written training manual. Maybe all these or a combination of just a few. Next, what are the online pedagogical considerations? Can you use video and audio? Will the computers in the clinic be able to handle them? What are the methods to facilitate discussion and feedback? And what are the adult learning theory considerations that you have to consider in designing your material? And finally, what is the timeline for project completion? How much time and money do you have to allocate to the project? The next stage is design. In this stage, you create learning objectives and lesson plans, select content and media, develop exercises for the learner to apply their knowledge, and create assessment instruments to test the learners. The design stage should be systematic and specific. Systematic means a logical, orderly method of identifying, developing, and evaluating a set of planned strategies that match the project's goals. Specific means each element of the instructional design plan needs to be executed with attention to detail and fitting into the original scope of the project. These are the steps involved in the design stage. First, document the project's instructional, visual, and technical design strategies. Then apply instructional strategies according to the intended learning outcomes by Bloom's domains, affective, cognitive, or psychomotor. Next, design the user interface, if you are using technology, 
or user experience. Finally, create a prototype of the lesson and apply the visual designs, images, graphics, sounds, and video. Development is Stage 3. The development stage is where instructional designers and content specialists, programmers, and graphic designers create and assemble the content assets that were defined in the design phase. In this phase, storyboards and graphics are designed. If e-learning is involved, programmers develop and or integrate technologies. Quality assurance testers debug and proof the content of the application. Finally, the project is reviewed and revised according to the feedback received. Implementation During the implementation phase, a procedure for delivering the training by the facilitators and the learners has been finalized and put into action. In some cases, you may design the training but not actually deliver the material. In these situations, facilitators' training, train the trainer in other words, should cover the course curriculum, learning, outcomes, method of delivery, and testing procedures. Preparation of the learners includes training them on new tools, such as software or hardware, used to deliver the content and the student registration. This is also the place where you ensure that the books, hands-on equipment, computers, teaching labs, CD-ROMs, and software are in place and that the learning application or website is completely functional. The final stage of a training cycle is evaluation. The evaluation phase consists of two parts, formative and summative. Formative evaluation is present in each stage of the ADI process to make sure you're staying on the original plan. The summative evaluation consists of test of the learning objective and providing opportunities to gather feedback from the learners. ADI was used by trainers long before computer-based learning became prevalent. So we are adding an optional step, rapid prototype. For best results, the development process for CD-ROMs or more commonly used web-based training programs should use a modified ADI model. A rapid prototype phase is inserted after or is an extension of the design phase. The rapid prototype is simply a quickly assembled module that can be tested with the learner audience early in the design phase. The evaluation typically looks at things like how well the students responded to the content, how effective the learning activities are, and how well the program runs on the computer and the internet technology. Based on the feedback, the designer can revise and develop another prototype. This iterative process continues until there is agreement and confidence that the prototype actually works during the implementation. Instructional designers and writers are able to proceed with their work more efficiently since they know exactly what the program will look like and what it is capable of doing. Additionally, with all the major technical issues resolved, final programming becomes a simple matter of assembling the various media components. In some projects, you may want to create a wireframe, a simplistic, non-functional version of the application, even early in the design. So let's take a moment to just summarize and look at how we apply these principles to computer-based learning. Remember Knowles? Set down the foundation for adult learning theory? In 1984, Knowles actually provides an example of applying andragogy to the design of personal computer training through the explanation of why certain commands, functions, and operations within the system were essential for effective computer use. Instruction should be task-orientated instead of rooted to memorization in context to the common tasks that are performed on the job. Instruction should take into account the wide range of different backgrounds of the students. Learning materials and exercises should take into consideration students' varied levels and types of previous experiences with computer use. Instructors should allow adult students, because of their typical self-directed approach and their learning experiences, to discover things for themselves and provide guidance when an error or when requests for assistance is made. This concludes the lecture on Introduction to Training in Adult Learning. The summary of this lecture is that, number one, we've reviewed the basic concept of andragogy, Knowles' concepts of adult learning, Bloom's taxonomy, the three domains, and the Addy instructional design method. The next step will be working on applying these concepts in the training setting.